Hi, my name is John. I'm really busy right now with a lot of car stuff going on. I'm still editing the MB Drift stuff. I'm leaving for Texas in a couple weeks. I'm driving. I've got a lot of drum stuff in the works. I've got so much going on. I wish I could retire because I got, I think I have too many hobbies and I'm doing too much stuff outside of work, but it's all good. Even though I'm doing a bunch of stuff, this thing I'm about to show has been bothering me for a while now. If you know me, you know I'm what I refer to as a non-denominational born-again Christian. What exactly does that mean? That means I believe the Bible to be accurate and true. Non-denominational means I don't belong to a particular denomination such as like Baptist or Presbyterian or something like that. I personally don't do what non-Christians refer to as cramming it down your throat. Now, I am vocal about what I believe in, but the reason why I'm a little bit more mellow is because of the area that we live in. And I see way too many hypocrites here, but they're very vocal about their faith. But to me, they're giving Jesus more of a bad name and they're being a very bad example. So even though I'm not as vocal, I wanna lead by example. And if anybody has any questions, I'm always happy to answer stuff. And I will not cram it down your, your throat, as you say, but I'm also not going to hold back either. How's that? So I just don't want to be lumped in with those people. It almost seems like around this area, inside the churches need just as much witnessing to as non-Christians do. It's a crazy place around here. And yes, I wish everybody was a Christian, but that's not how it works. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. I'm not a very smart person. I only know about a couple of different things. I know about cars and some video stuff, you know, music. Our whole family plays music. I'm always willing to discuss different music stuff, although my family calls me a music snob and the Bible. I can talk about those things all the time. If you're a car person, what I'm about to say, you know is true. You know how when you're at work or at a grocery store or somewhere and you hear two non-car people talking about car stuff and you just go and you, you just can't hold back. You have to go say something. You have to, because it drives you nuts. That's how I am with the Bible. If I hear people saying wrong things, because there's so many weird things out there that people say about Jesus or the Bible or certain scriptures, I have to say something. I can't hold back. I have to open my mouth because it, it, people don't know what they're talking about. The Bible says, test all things, everything. Hold fast to that which is true. Hold on to the things that are true. It says that right here in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 21. Examine everything. Hold firmly to that which is good. In 2 Timothy 4, verse 2, it says, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. season. Correct, rebuke, and exhort with great patience and instruction. And then the rest of the verses down here are for the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine, wanting to have their ears tickled. That refers to mostly like the Joel Osteens, the Benny Hins, and people like that. But when you go back up here and it says to correct and rebuke, we're also supposed to test, according to other scripture, you test your pastors, your elders, everything. They might twist this. and. Unless you read it for yourself, you won't know. You're just going to go by whatever they tell you. So this is going to be a John MacArthur clip. And before I play it, I think Joe is the one who said it. Wrong doctrine leads to wrong living. I think people hold John MacArthur up too high. He's a man, just like everybody else. He's prone to error. That's fine. But if it's really bad you need to confront the guy he needs to be told this is 
what I'm about to show you is completely wrong. The way that the wrong doctrine works is he is a Calvinist and he's also pre-trib. Now I won't get too much into the Calvinism aspect, but I'll tell you a couple things about Calvinism. They believe that people are chosen by God specifically to go to heaven, but they also believe that people are chosen specifically to go to hell. That is not true. God wants everybody to be saved. That doesn't mean everybody's going to be saved. It's up to you with your free will to repent. You know, do you want to continue the way you're living and go the other way? Or do you want to change your style of living and go the other way? It's your choice to accept Jesus' free gift. He's not going to drag you into heaven against your will. If you don't want to go, you don't want to go. He's not going to drag you in there. So that's where the Calvinists get that wrong. That's They just think you're, you're chosen and that's it. You have no say in the matter. That doesn't. That takes away your free will. That means you're just like a, a robot. It doesn't make any sense. And that's not what scripture says. It says Jesus died for everybody, not just select people. Everybody has the same opportunity. It also says he doesn't want anybody to go to hell. That would be your choice. The Bible also says hell was made for the devil and his angels. The devil just wants to deceive you and take as many people away from God as he can. That doesn't benefit you in any way and it actually doesn't benefit him in any way in the long run. He's just taking people away from God. In the early 90s, when I first became a Christian, I used to listen to all kinds of Christian radio and watch Christian TV, but let's put quotes around that Christian because there's a bunch of different preachers on there. And John MacArthur was on the radio, and I actually heard somebody in the background of his congregation, they go, praise God, I'm going to hell. Because of that wrong doctrine, they believe they were chosen specifically to serve God to go to hell. That's, that's, that's messed up. John MacArthur believes in a pre-tribulation rapture, but he believes in tribulation saints. So that's kind of that's kind of weird in a way, but there isn't even one pre-tribulation verse. Now that's not what this message is about right here that I'm about to talk about, but I'm just trying to show where wrong doctrine leads to wrong living. A lot of pre-trib people don't think it's a big deal. They're like, oh, pray for pre, prepare for post, but they don't pre prepare for post really. And... The post-tribbers are more passionate about that because they see the pre-trib as being a, a major issue, especially when it comes to the great falling away, which is going to happen. The post-tribbers believe that that somehow sets up the church for a major fall. So I'm going to play this clip right here. It's in regard to the about a half of the tribulation period when, when men would be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. My question is, uh, once a person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? Yes, uh, I think, you know... I'm gonna skip some of that, but because uh, we have the transcript here. And the reason why I got the transcript is because that's also Todd Friel in the picture. He's also a Calvinist. He's He's got a lot of wrong teaching as well. Don't, don't, don't listen to these two guys. So here's the transcript, and the reason why I'm pulling this up is because there's a lot of people online saying, well, that was an audio clip. We don't really know that that's him. If you're familiar with John MacArthur, that's his voice. Here's the transcript. This is on the gracetoyou.org. It's gty.org website. It's in their library, and these are sermons. These are like transcripts of the sermons. Now, this is afterwards where people come up and ask questions. So... This is the exact thing he said. I'll skip some of it because some of it he's just kind of babbling. It says, my question is in regard to the latter half of the tribulation when men will be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. My question is, once a person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? And John MacArthur says, yes. And then he says, I think. That's your problem. He thinks. And if you go through this whole question and answer thing on this entire page. He says, I think quite a bit. He needs to actually have scripture, not his opinion. But uh, he talks about how 
this and you and and right here it says this is the tribulation the rapture of the church this is in this order that they believe seven year tribulation christ returns sets up his kingdom now that's correct except for the rapture part that doesn't come before the tribulation so then uh, if you go down here so then he says now the question is if you're living in the tribulation period and you take this mark in other words i hate when people rephrase people's questions you identify with the beast's empire will you still be able to be redeemed and i think again the answer to that is yes yes otherwise there would be no salvation of anybody in the end of the tribulation and you've got to have the salvation of folks in the end of the tribulation so i don't think the fact that someone takes that is a sentence to permanency any more than you being a part of this world system once in your life means you have to be a part of the system all your life first of all this is where their wrong doctrine leads to wrong living because they don't believe christians will go through the tribulation because they say that's the wrath of god the word tribulation means trial or trouble or persecution that is the refining of the church. The, that's, the church has to go through the tribulation. That's, and then at the end of the tribulation, it says the bride has made herself ready. And then Jesus comes. This is where he's got this wrong. Plus, he keeps saying, I think, I think. So a lot of people have said online when I comment on this that I'm taking this out of context. We need the whole context. Their whole transcript is right here. You can't say I think, I think, you have to go with what does scripture say? This is Revelation 14, 9. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength. He will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of his holy angels. The smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. They have no rest day and night, those who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Of course, the next verse, here's the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. That shows you right there that the Christians are there. They're not... They didn't rapture these ones first, and there's more that come later. It's one whole thing. This is Revelation 16, 2. So the first angel went out and poured out his bowl on the earth, and a harmful and painful sore afflicted the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. There's no getting around these. There's not like these people repented you can see later that these people purposely did not repent even after the wrath starts on these people they curse god you have to read this you can't put your own opinions in this there is no interpret there's no interpretation of the bible it's not interpreting it says one thing there's no way to to twist things this is revelation 19:20 and the beast was seized with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast. That's what I was saying before. He simply wants to deceive you and take as many people away from God as he can. That's the only thing Satan does. And he does it very subtly. Not, he's not, they're not going to come along and go, hey, you need to take this mark. And these people are going to willingly take this mark. But you cannot get around this as far as, yes, you can take this and go to heaven. It's very, very clear that you cannot. And I've been telling people for quite a while now, don't listen to John MacArthur. He's, it, the, the doctrine is so messed up that he's going to lead you the wrong way. You know, as far as the Calvinist stuff, if you want to look into that yourself, you'll see where it, it's, it, it becomes a real mess. These are some of the comments under here. Pray for this man's followers. I, I agree. Scripture is very clear. There is no salvation for those who take the mark and worship the beast. I, I totally agree. But there are some comments in here that say, like, well, this is only an audio clip and... 
we don't really know if that was really him. And there's there's a bunch of people that are still holding him high, even though he said that. It's as if they they're blinded to it, like they don't really believe he said it. But that's why I pulled up the transcript. See, here's one of those comments right here. Instead of a picture of Pastor MacArthur saying this, I would rather see his lips moving. You people are so easily deceived. Who is this man asking the question? I have never heard Pastor MacArthur ever proclaim this in his preaching the word ever. Well, that's what that's what the transcript is for, because a lot of people in these comments are saying that. See, here's another one. Truth Clips. I think that's the name of this channel. Really? So you take a minute of a man of God's sermon and 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 twist his message of the word he is preaching on. Now I question your integrity. Those who add or take away be aware and those and of those who also divided. John MacArthur is a true man of God. And that's what I'm saying. They're so they're so blinded that they hold him so high. He could almost say anything he wants and they'll believe it and still follow him. Don't do that. He's still a man. He, if, now, if he repents of this and recants this and says, hey, I'm sorry, I was wrong, you know, and this and that, that would be great. But his doctrine that he teaches won't let him because it's impossible. He would have to change his whole doctrine and not be a Calvinist anymore. Then this one says, I do not support John MacArthur. I believe he is wrong on this, but I will not condemn the man over this. You should. Everybody on this forum has an, has an incomplete and at times errant theology. I agree. Some people are in error. You need to fix, fix your, you know, your, your mistakes. Learn from them. Are we all children of the devil? Yes, he is wrong. But many of y'all, okay, need to tone it down. Who made you judge over the Lord's servants? The Bible did. It tells, it tells you who, how to tell who's who. So I put the Bible, of course, it's for correction. We are to test all pastors. We are to expose false teachers and evil. That's me right there. Then you got people like this. John MacArthur did not say the church could receive the mark. What? He just did. If he said you could be saved, that's the church. Of course, as a premillennialist, he put into account the church would already been raptured by then. And we know that during those times of tribulation, there will be a great revival. The Bible doesn't say there'll be a great falling away. So this person's also messed up. Who will then be saved during their revival? People who had even received the mark. This is not true, people. There's so many people that, you know, I agree with John MacArthur. Who else will be saved in the revival if not people who had placed their allegiance to the Antichrist before? None of that's true. So he almost he almost plays it down as you take the mark as kind of like you have your credit card. You're just kind of a in the system type of thing. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you cannot have that. You will not go to heaven. It's it's so clear. So don't take the mark of the beast. Don't listen to John MacArthur anymore, okay? So anyway, that's what's been bothering me lately. I wanted to do a video on this and I hope it made a little bit of sense.